Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today it is that time again. I can't believe this year is getting close to an end, but I'm going to be sharing my top makeup products that I tried this year of 2022. Now this is not going to include eyeshadow palettes because I think I want to do a separate video for that since I try a lot of eyeshadow palettes and there's like a bunch of favorites. So I will be doing a separate video for my eyeshadow palettes, but I wanted to round up just my all-around favorite newer launches of this year, so I tried to stick to specifically 2022 launches, otherwise this video would get too long because you guys know I try a lot of makeup and there's so many things in my collection that I love, but I really just want to go over the best new 2022 launches so I have tons to share with you so let's get into it so we're gonna start with primer and um, I'm sure you guys can guess my top two primers of the year because I talk about them non-stop but if you didn't guess it it is actually the Danessa Myricks this is the yummy skin blurring balm like powder and this has been so amazing for keeping my oils at bay. It's seriously one of the best primers for oily skin. You can use it as like a very light skin tint, but uh, I prefer it just as a primer. You only need a little bit. It does come with a little spoon here. Mine, I think, is loose in the box of makeup, but it does have a little spoon. You could scoop the product out, and then I'll just do a little, maybe like pea-sized amount mostly in my t-zone area um i feel like this product is very hit or miss for people but you have to use it the right way to get the best results i think a lot of people don't like the texture because it is kind of a cream but i swear it dries down as a powder so when you put it on you might see a little hint of like a subtle glow to it but that will definitely go away once you put your foundation on top and just blend it in so the texture isn't the nicest when you put it on but it seriously turns magically into a powder and this holds on to all my foundation. Keeps me seriously matte all day long. So if you are very oily, this is seriously a lifesaver. It's one of the best products I've tried for oily skin. Um, and I definitely suggest giving it a shot and testing it out the way that I mentioned. The next primer is going to be my Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Primer. You have to make sure it is the Vanish Airbrush because they do have two primers. And this has worked wonders for my skin as well. I use this so much that I've pretty much used up this entire bottle this year. So that's definitely telling you something that I love this and I go through it. And I feel like this one also also does keep me matte throughout the day. It's not as matte as the Vanessa Myricks, but this also gives me kind of a smoother appearance on the skin and my foundations just lay so nicely over this and it definitely helps with longevity as well. So I know it's pricey, but to me it's worth the money and I just always have to have this in my collection. I already purchased my second one since this one's about done, but definitely recommend trying it. You can even buy minis in theirs. I would maybe suggest doing that to try it out just get the smaller size now I have tried a ton of foundations this year and I wanted to narrow it down to a top two so first is gonna go to my hourglass again this is the soft glow foundation I do have this one on and I just I love the coverage of this one it does offer more of a medium to full coverage if you guys um, have more problem skin acne prone skin this is nice because it does cover really well and I feel like this lasts a lot throughout the day I have this on today with my Danessa Myricks and I've already had like a full photo shoot. My makeup's already been on for like six hours so it's holding up really nicely. It never breaks apart. It doesn't look heavy or cakey on the skin. It's not really dry either. It does offer a little bit of a glow but it's not overly glowy so it's about perfect for me when I still want just a hint of that glow to look just natural and pretty it doesn't settle into like lines or anything so this is just a really nice foundation love it for photo shoots too when I want to look flawless this has been a go-to so this one is the shade 7 I also use shade 5 but this is like my self tan shade definitely recommend trying this if you do have I would say combo to oily skin another great foundation for oily skin has been the makeup forever HD skin so 
they redid their foundation this year and for us oily girls and guys this has been a lifesaver this is more of like your medium coverage so it's not super full at all so I like this more for every day but you guys will see so many people with oily skin love and use this one because it holds up throughout the day looks nice on the skin but it's at the same time it's not too dry where it's looking caked and cracked on the skin it's so beautiful and just my go-to when I want something a little bit lighter like I don't need the full glam but I want a little bit of coverage makeup forever HD skin has been really nice I've worn this for like 10 hour days with no touch-ups before and I still didn't look super greasy at all I forgot to put this with the primer but we're just gonna throw it in here because it's kind of a multi-use product but this is the elf halo glow liquid filter the hype is real with this one it is so good it's supposed to be a dupe of the Charlotte Tilbury be, what is it called flawless filter Hollywood flawless filter I never really used that product because it was really sparkly on me but for some reason I do like this elf one and since I have oily skin I actually use it more as a primer I really like to add this in just for a touch of extra glow mixed in with more of a matte foundation perhaps but I think it's actually so pretty on the skin and it just kind of makes everything look more natural and a little more radiant but not oily um, so I've been loving it I have the shade number one fair I think this is gonna be so pretty too I need to try a deeper shade just like in the summer as an all-over kind of face product just for an all-over glow but it does have some coverage to it but that's kind of what it looks like and then you can blend it out you can even use it as a highlight but I just like the glow that it gives and it's not glittery at all it just gives you that glowing from within a little bit of shine so this has been kind of hard to get your hands on I know elf recently restocked though so definitely check their website I'll have it linked down below because it might be available I know Target also sells it but it was a really great product this year for this year's powder, I'm going to give it to the Sigma powder. Uh, you guys know I have a couple of tried and true favorites in my collection that I've mentioned several times, but they're not new this year, but the Sigma one I think is really nice. I especially love it for under the eyes. I feel like it's nice and blurring, and it does keep the oils at bay, but not as much as like my one size powder, but it's a nice in-between. So this one is actually their vanilla bean. I also use like their more medium tone for all over the face, but I especially like this one for under the eyes. I just feel like it looks really nice this one almost has a soft yellow tint that brightens a little bit too but it's such a nice finely milled powder that does the job definitely worth checking out um i would wait maybe for a sale though because oftentimes sigma will do 30 percent 40 percent off site wide so definitely snag it on a sale because it is a little bit pricey but it works great for concealers i didn't really have any that wowed me at the beginning of the year but towards the end of the year there are some newer launches that i really enjoyed so so first up is the Huda Beauty one and this one is the uh, Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer. I do like a good coverage concealer. I do. <laughs> I have some darkness to cover up so I don't like anything too see-through and I do like my concealer not like drying but kind of in between. I don't like a super hydrating concealer because again I'm oily so if it's really hydrating like let's say the Kosas one then my mascara will smudge under there so I do like something that's kind of in between. This is a nice luminous matte like it mentioned so I feel like it's perfect. Like it doesn't show my fine lines too bad. I feel like this one actually holds up throughout the day and stays in place. I use the shade Cotton Candy. And I would say this one from the Sephora collection is actually very comparable if you want something a little bit cheaper. This is the best skin ever full coverage concealer. You can usually snag it on a deal or like a buy to get one free. Sometimes they offer multiple points if you're buying Sephora brand. So their collection is actually really great and their concealer does remind me a lot of the Huda. They're very similar in the consistency, the coverage. So... I've been absolutely loving these two. In the Sephora, I use the shade 11.5P. Okay, let's talk blush. I have to share my all-time favorite this year, number one spot, is one size. I usually have one blush every year that I just can't stop reaching for and that is this one. I love this formula and I love this color. So this one is the 3D Blush Trio in the shade Very That. So this has three products in here. They're all kind of blushy tones. So you got your cream. It does have a little cover on it which is nice. Your powder and then this kind of more glowy blush topper. Honestly, don't use that very much. I probably should try it but I honestly just use the cream and powder on top and it is so beautiful. This is an insanely pigmented blush so I like this color and this color alone. I think the other shades are going to be 
way too dark for me and I get so many compliments on this blush whenever I wear it. I just feel so pretty. It's that perfect peachy pink. I do have this on now. It gives me the perfect pigment that I want. I do like a brighter blush and I love using the cream and powder together. I just feel like it's so long lasting on the cheeks. A lot of blushes tend to fade off on me pretty quick. This does not. So let me do a quick swatch. So the cream is a nice, it's a drier cream formula. So it's not going to give you a glow. It offers like a more matte finish. And then I pop on top the powder, which is a little bit brighter. So that's going to give you this more peachy pink tone and just kind of brighten things up. And then your like blush topper, this is going to give like a gold finish. Yeah, I don't use that so much, but I honestly think it's worth it just for these two. So it's kind of similar in a way to like Patrick Ta's blush, how it's like the cream and the powder together. Um, but this one isn't as glowy as his. If you're looking for a good cream blush formula, definitely check this one out. One Size Brand is an awesome brand for oily skin. People with dry skin probably get so sick of me in my makeup reviews. This is a cheek palette, but I absolutely have been loving my Hourglass cheek palette, the ambient lighting edit unlocked the elephant. I decided to include it in the blush because I do use it the most for blush, but I absolutely love that I have everything in one little palette here. So this is a great travel palette because first of all, you have your setting powders. These are a little bit more luminous, so I typically do them underneath the eyes. Um, I'll use it for that setting under there. You got your highlight in here, two beautiful blushes and a bronzer. So just all in one for me. These are expensive but I feel like they are worth it. Just the softness, the quality, they give you that, it's called the ambient lighting palettes because they're supposed to perform like your makeup is under studio lights because studio lights make everything better, right? So that's how these are kind of formulated. Uh, one of my best friends who's not really into makeup, uh, she actually bought this palette, which is huge for her because she never splurges on this kind of stuff and she t said it was totally worth it and she loves it too. So I was so happy that she liked it. And I feel like this is selling out. I think it's limited, so I don't know how long you'll be able to get it. But here is the swatches of the Elephant Palette. They do look lighter, but I, I'm telling you, they do build up really nicely on the skin. Those blushes are pretty pigmented on me, and this works for fair to maybe a light medium skin tone. Otherwise, they do have other shades in the collection. There's like a butterfly one and a tiger one as well for a lighter tone and a deeper tone. There was definitely some more cream blushes that I wore this year because I have been getting into creams, but all of them did not come out this year. So I'm not going to include those, but if you check some of my other favorites videos, they're probably in there. Okay, I also had to give a shout out to Benefit because they redid their blushes this year and I love their new formula. I think they are so nice for a powder blush. I'll just swatch a few of my favorites first being Willa so if you guys were used to the old formula where they were so light I feel like hardly any skin tones honestly could wear them they didn't hardly show up these are a lot more pigmented they still have that really soft creamy formula though and they still have a little bit of that scent so here is Willa gorgeous rosy blush also love this one pom pom this is a nice everyday kind of rusty shade this is nice for like fall winter time but it actually looks more rosy once you get it on the skin that one's pom pom again I love the packaging of these as well. And then such a fun orange. This one is butterfly. It's a very unique kind of shade. It's definitely like a monarch butterfly orange. And I feel like orange blush has had its moment this year. So those are just a few of my favorite colors in the Benefit line. Really great quality of blushes here. All right, for bronzers, I feel like I've tried quite a few new ones this year. Also, again, going back to one size, I am going to include their Made for Shade Bronze and Sculpt Trio. I really like this because you do get three different tones. And since I still have tan, like sometimes I'm a little bit lighter, sometimes I have a little bit of a tan, so I like that I can kind of mix it up with this. I feel like a lot of people are saying they don't like this formula though, and I think it might be because it is very pigmented. Like, one size of stuff is really pigmented, and I'm thinking maybe they just didn't get the right color. I made sure I bought, I think this is the lightest or the second lightest, the light trio and it works great for me I had no problems with it I like a good pigmented bronzer and I thought these were really nice like I can just mix the lighter ones if I need to go lighter go deeper with that one like I used that one solely today as a bronzer and I feel like it looks really pretty let me do a swatch for you so it's a similar in packaging it has even the little smiley faces on it kind of like the blush palette did 
but these are really soft and blendable so I don't really know why other people aren't liking this one because I think it's great so here is the swatches but yeah I've been loving the one size face products so far also the house labs bronzer another one that I feel like people didn't really get hyped about but again you have to get the right shade and I think that's the issue so I have light level 3 and I think it's an amazing bronzer like I think the packaging is so luxe and the shade itself is so soft and smooth it's literally buttery when you touch it and this is the perfect shade for me and you can definitely build it up but it literally is so silky I just don't understand why people aren't liking this I think it's so beautiful I have been loving that one from house labs and that's um, Lady Gaga's new line that launched this year at Sephora. And another powder bronzer. <laughs> Had to give a shout out to the L'Oreal Infallible one from the drugstore. This is a great one. And I was looking for a really good drugstore bronzer because I feel like a lot of them can be way too orange, patchy on the skin. This is great. I got the shade, let's see light medium 300 and it's really beautiful it does have a little bit more of a neutral undertone which is nice again very silky soft a little bit of a thinner formula but it works great so i love having a new favorite from the drugstore as well and then my favorite cream bronzer i think you guys know but I really fell in love with the Charlotte Tilbury cream bronzer this year. I actually have two of them. I have the fair and I have the medium. Now the fair one is definitely more cool tone. These are huge bronzers so they are pricey but you do get a lot for your money. You're definitely getting your money's worth. It's one of my favorite formulas. Again for more oily skin. I don't know if dry skin would love this one because it is more of a matte formula in my opinion. I'm not sure why the name says sun kissed glow because I'm not really getting a glow from these whatsoever. They feel more matte to me. Here is the fair, like I don't see any glow here. So I think maybe that might be why people don't like them is because they're not super glowy. But again, if you have oily skin, you don't really want extra luminosity. So these blended gray. I did a whole dedicated review on these. I was so impressed. I also use the medium shade because I like to have two options. The fair is a little bit more cooler. This one's a little deeper and a little more warmth to it. But yeah, those are the differences. Those have definitely been my favorite cream bronzer of the year for sure. Okay, for brows, I have been branching out a lot and trying so many new brow products and there has been some really great ones on the market this year, but I think my all-time favorite has to be this Give Brow Pencil, the Hella On Point Ultra Fine Brow Pencil. I love a good super thin tip like this. If you guys remember the Huda Beauty Micro Brow, I really liked it, but it kept breaking off every time I would use it because it was so skinny. This one is just as thin, maybe a little bit thicker, but it doesn't break ever. Like, I've never had it snap off, but it's so nice to really get in there. You can really detail out the different brow strokes you want to do with this, so I love this so much. It has a little spoolie on the end as well. I did recently see a couple of these at TJ Maxx in some different shades, so you can get it on there for like $8, but they might be gone by now. My store is still restocking them. There's the Most Deft Pencil, and then there's the Hella On Point. They're both really good, but the Hella one is my fave. Also wanted to mention this for the brows too as a brow pencil. The Gimme Brow Volumizing Pencil from Benefit is also a really good one this year. It was actually kind of cool because this is a pencil that also has little fibers built into it, kind of like how Gimme Brow does. So it's a little bit like it feels almost thicker when you're putting it on, but I like how it gives more volume to the brows. So I'll do a little swatch here, but it's really nice. It's really easy to use and just gives you a little bit more thickness. I have the shade number one. I also have two brow gel favorites. I love a good brow gel that has fibers in it or color to it. So the NYX Thick It Stick It was a real winner for me this year. It kind of replaced Benefit's Gimme Brow for me. I used to use that all the time. This is essentially the same thing, but it almost gives me even more color, which is nice. So on some more lighter makeup days or no makeup days when I'm in a hurry, I can literally just brush this through my brows and go and not have to take the extra time to like pencil them out. But yeah, it gives you a little color and it also has some little fibers built in so I've been really enjoying this and it's nice you can get it just easily at the drugstore I have the shade cool blonde 
And then I have another favorite too. This one offers a little bit more color and I feel like it holds them just a little bit more than the NYX, but the NYX is still great. But I recently picked up the Lawless Hold Up Soft Set Creamy Brow Wax and I really enjoy this one as well. So I have the shade Light Medium in this one and yeah, this one just offers a little bit more hold, but it also has that same kind of color and fibers in it that add some thickness. So. I usually go into with pencil and I'll put this over top. That's what I did today. For mascara, I picked two faves for this year, a drugstore and a high-end drugstore. The Milani Anti-Gravity. This is the highly rated mascara from them. Another one that I've turned a lot of people onto. And Milani just has such great stuff. They're one of my favorite drugstore brands because their stuff is seriously so comparable to the high-end products. And this just really lengthens the lashes and adds a little bit of volume. I like a little bit more length, so this is nice for that, and it does not smudge, doesn't flake. It's so good. So here is the wand on the Milani, but yeah, you have to get the anti-gravity one. Um, I think they have another one called highly rated, but the anti-gravity is by far the best. And for high end, I picked out the Tower 28. The, I think it's called Make Waves Mascara. I've been really loving this one as of lately. Again, it gives me quite a bit of length. It has a nice little curve to the wand to really hug the lashes as you kind of build them up. Um, again, doesn't flake, doesn't smear, so love that in a mascara. Okay, for lip stuff, now I don't know if this is a new lip pencil, so maybe I'm cheating here. I haven't really tried a whole lot of new ones, but I just can't stop reaching for the Makeup Forever pencil in Anywhere Caffeine. It's seriously the perfect mid-tone neutral color and the formula is so nice. It isn't too creamy and it really stays on the lips throughout the day and it just has the perfect amount of depthness when I pair it with a nude lip that kind of gives my lips more of a fuller look. So I know this one's really hyped, hard to find, but 100% it's worth it to me. Seriously my favorite lip liner of all time. And here is a swatch of it. So it is pretty pigmented. Now I have so much lip products to share with you. I feel like palettes and lip products I'm kind of a junkie for and I keep a lot in my collection and I had so many good new ones this year so let's get started. So this year I've been really into the more kind of balmy, glossy lip look. So that's most of these favorites here. Uh, had to give a shout out to the Makeup by Mario. These are the Plumping Lip Serums. I have on today the Mauve Glow. These are so pretty on the lips. They give you that glossy, pouty look. Um, they're a little bit melty though. I don't love the packaging of them and they just kind of melt when you put them on, which I think is normal, but you kind of glide it on and it melts right onto the lips actually quite nice but the applicator I would like it to be a little bit smaller it's a little bit big but all around it's a really great lip product obviously I bought three shades so I definitely love it I have the shade bare glow which is probably my favorite because it's a little bit more pinky and neutral here is mauve glow that I have on it's a little bit more plummy and my most recent pickup is the honey glow which is a little darker too but it gives just a little bit more warmth. So those are the three colors. But yeah, the packaging can be just a bit annoying because like swatching those even, it gets a bunch of buildup around the sides. So I feel like it just needs a smaller tube. Now something that's really similar to those Makeup by Mario serums, but they have just the perfect applicator. These are the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lip Plumps. And I have two shades of these. I have the White Peach, which again, it's that same really melty, glossy formula. They're literally practically identical. And these you can get on sale often. Tarte always has these on sale. And then I also have the shade... Now this one, I think the shade came off of it. So I'll have to insert it. It's something like rose or petal or something like that. But yeah, it's just a little bit more pink than the white peach one, but these are also great and just super comparable to the Makeup by Mario. Now a good affordable option if you kind of want that same juicy look is the ColourPop Glowing Lips. I would say these aren't quite as glossy as the other two I mentioned, but they're still really nice, especially for the price. So my favorites here I have Indulge Me, but yeah, you can see they're not quite as glossy, but they still give you a shiny look. And these are a little bit more pigmented. I also have the shade Cockatoo, which I wear quite a bit. It's this really pretty pink. And I also grabbed La Cienega. Those are just a few in my collection. I have a lot, but these are some of my favorite nudes. Now, this was also the year of lip oil for me. 
I know these didn't come out this year, but they got super hyped this year, the Dior lip oils. I mostly use the shade Rosewood, but I know these didn't come out this year, so I won't focus on it too much, but these really kind of started my love for lip oils. These are more of a thicker lip oil. And one that I really like that was new this year is the House Labs one. I really like this color too. This one is in the shade Tint, so it kind of goes with your pH, and it does turn into kind of a more pinky lip oil, but I love the consistency. So it starts off more clear, but then it will start changing more pink, and I just thought this was nice. It was really similar to the Dior, how it's a little more of a thicker lip oil, and I just love more tinted lip oils. And then I fell in love with this Givenchy little balm gloss thing, especially this color was so beautiful. And a lot of people don't like the smell of these because it has a rose scent to it. I personally think it smells amazing, but I feel like that was the number one drawback for people. But this is beautiful. It kind of gave me um, it was a little bit more of like a lip oil gloss hybrid and the shade, uh, let's see, Rose Perfecto gave me a little bit of color too. It's just so beautiful. So that is the Liquid Balm from Givenchy. Just love the shade. I love the packaging, the swirls in there, ultra luxe and just stunning. And then lastly, I really love the Summer Fridays lip balm as well. I don't know if this launched this year, but that's when I tried it and I bought these new colored ones this year and I really love the shade Brown Sugar. It's kind of similar to the Givenchy where I just like these like hint of brown kind of lip colors, but these smell like cake batter. They're really hydrating on the lips. I just love them. So this one gives you a little bit more of a plummy gloss look to it, but also hydrates and smells amazing so i've been loving the summer fridays ones i'm definitely going to be buying a full size of this one i also have just their clear one too these are so good so i think that's actually everything i wanted to share with you guys today for my favorite makeup of 2022 i know that was like a ton of lip products there at the end but these are just some really great ones that I keep reaching for every single day. It's hard not to use, but stay tuned for when I do my top palettes of the year. I think I'm going to try to do a top 10. I want to do my worst makeup of the year as well, which might be a little bit difficult too because a lot of stuff I decluttered, but I don't know if that's going to be before this or after, but I plan to hopefully also do that. I want to do my top Bath & Body Works scents. There's so many top things I want to do. So many videos, so little time, but anyways, that's it for this one. I hope that you guys found this helpful. Let me know if you added anything to your wish list. If you guys tried any of my favorite products, let me know down below if you guys loved any of these if any of these didn't work for you I'm so curious to know but I love hearing when some of my favorites also become some of your favorites but that's gonna be it thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video bye guys